Numerical Computation, Chapter 7, Video 5. We will now write all three methods in a standard form. So recall that we want to solve ax equal to b, and we actually perform some fixed point iteration. So we want to change it into a fixed point iteration problem in the form that x equal to mx plus y for suitable matrix M and a suitable vector Y. Writing this into fixed point iteration, we will have X to the K plus one equal to M X K plus Y. And we want to show that all three methods could be written in this form with suitable choices of M and Y. We start with splitting the matrix A into three parts. So we will read write the matrix A into the sum of three matrices, L, D, and U, and they are defined as following. Now A is a square matrix size n by n, so it has a diagonal part, and it has a part below the diagonal, and it has a part above the diagonal. So the matrix D here will be a diagonal matrix, the same size as A, taking all the diagonals from A and fill the rest with zero. And the matrix L will be taking the triangle L here below diagonal from A and fill the rest with zero. And the matrix U will be taking the upper triangle part of A and fill the rest with zero. So all three matrices, L, D, and U, they all have the same size as A. And you can see trivially, adding these matrices up, you recover A. Okay, now we can rewrite the system AX equal to B in the following way. AX can be written as L plus D plus UX, and we distribute it, so we get LX, DX, UX equal to B. So this now becomes the new system, which is equivalent to the previous one. Let's look at what the Jacobi iterations are doing. So in Jacobi iteration, we kept the diagonal term on the left-hand side and move everything else to the right. And we compute the next iteration, xk plus 1, by solving it for the diagonal element. So that becomes the following. So we keep the diagonal turn on the left and move the L and the U all to the right. And on the right, we substitute the X with XK and the value it returns becomes XK plus one on the left. We now do some um, manipulation. We can multiply both sides here by D inverse on the left and solve for XK plus one. So this becomes D inverse applied on B and D inverse applied on these two terms, which we join as L plus U times XK. So we see that um, D inverse B is a vector and we call this YJ, J stand for Jacobi. And this matrix here, negative D inverse multiplied on L plus U becomes the matrix in front of XK and we call it MJ for Jacobi, which is written here. So we see we managed to write the Jacobi iteration into this standard form. And let's see what we can do to gauss seidel So remember in gauss seidel it's very similar to Jacobi with a modification, that is, all the value that has been computed up to the equation number i, the new values will be used immediately. So these new values will correspond to those in the matrix L. So L times X will be computed. So for that part, we will be actually using X to the K plus one. Okay. So now move the L to the left as well. So the left becomes D times X K plus one plus L times X K plus one. And the right hand side now is B minus U X K because we moved L to the left. Okay, let's do some manipulation. If we join D and L together, we get D plus L times XK plus one, and we solve for it. This results in multiply the inverse of this matrix 
on the left of the right hand side so I get this one times B and I get this inverse matrix times U and we see again now this guy here is a vector which we call Y and then this guy here including all the U and that's a matrix which we call M and we put GS under it to denote that's for Gauss Seidel okay so we see again we manage to write this in the standard form. Finally, let's look at SOR. So SOR is computed as um, using this parameter W. So what it does is it takes um, a combination of XK and whatever the gauss seidel is computing. So in the gauss seidel step, if we rewrite it as this, kept the left on the right hand side and then we will have x k plus 1 here okay and then it will be multiplied by the inverse and then we'll have 1 minus w multiplied by x k and then we can do some um, manipulation and solve this for x k plus 1 yeah and now let's multiply both sides by d so I have d x k plus 1 equals to 1 minus w times d and this one, if I multiply by D, it cancels the D inverse. So I just get a W outside, and I'm going to distribute the W on each term. So I get WB, WL, XK plus 1, and WU, XK. Now I will move the term with K plus 1 to the left-hand side, and then I combine them, and then take out the common factor. So I get D plus WL. And then the right hand side. I will collect all the terms with xk and write it together and the terms without xk by itself. Now the final step, I will multiply both sides by the inverse of this matrix and then I solve for xk. So I get this inverse times b plus this guy inverse times this whole matrix here in front of xk. So no matter what expression it takes, we see that this here becomes a vector. So we call this y vector. We write SOR to be to denote it for SOR. And this matrix is the coefficient matrix, and we call it M SOR to denote it for SOR. So we see again SOR can be written into the standard form. Okay, so the advantages of having everything in this standard form um, would be in doing analysis. Since all three methods are basically doing the same thing with different choices of M and R, we can just do analysis for the standard form and the result will be applied to all three methods. Okay, so next video we'll get into some error analysis and convergence analysis. See you then.